welcome to brief introductory session on uh, income tax <clears throat> tax is the key source of revenue to the government <clears throat> tax consists of direct taxes and uh, indirect taxes direct taxes consist of mainly income tax indirect tax includes goods and services tax customs central excise value added tax all these things income tax is a tax on income earned by various category of uh, persons and the tax burden is borne by the person paying the taxes but in case of indirect taxes tax burden is passed on to the end consumers tax collection by the government is used for meeting various expenditure of the government and for the development of the country therefore government tries its best to increase the tax collection year after year share of direct tax collection is about 55% out of the total tax revenue of the government therefore no wonder albert hard actually says that taxation is the price which civilized community pay for the opportunity of remaining civilized with this with this backdrop i give you a very brief overview of the income tax subject matter so that you will be able to appreciate some of the key elements of income tax needless to say income tax is a vast subject matter and it is very dynamic subject as the income tax is amended or modified year after year in today's discussion we will see various kinds of income and its uh, taxation exemptions and uh, deductions related to incomes approved savings and tax relief and tax rates and most importantly your obligation as a tax payer and also we will see what are the modes of collection of tax by the government income tax in india is not of recent origin income tax was existing in the ancient period as well we get references in manu samiti kalidasas raghuvamsha as well as arthashastra of chanakya these ancient scripts indicates how taxes are to be collected without causing any burden on the citizens and also that taxes should not be too high or too low but just the optimum in modern times one can trace the history of implementation of income tax in the year 1860 when the income tax was levied on rich people presently the income tax law which is in force is implemented in the year 1960 the law has undergone uh, several significant changes modifications and amendments over a period of time income tax law is modified with a view to rationalization simplification plugging loopholes and all these reasons but with the objective of maximization of government revenue income tax is a very detailed legislation and it consists of income tax act enacted in 1961 income tax rules uh, of 1962 various circulars and notifications issued by central board of uh, direct taxes and various uh, case laws pronounced by income tax tribunals high courts and uh, supreme court that may be the reason why albert einstein says that the hardest thing in the world is to understand the income tax 
Central Board of Direct Taxation, in brief, it is also called CBDT, is the apex body which provides essential inputs for policy and planning of direct taxes in India. It's also responsible for administration of direct taxes through income tax department. It deals with levy and collection of uh, uh, income tax. CBDT is part of the Department of Revenue in the Ministry of Finance. Income tax is a central government levy or it's a central government uh, mandated tax. The tax collection is shared between central government and state government as per the recommendations of Finance Commission constituted by President of India under Indian Constitution. Look at our uh, population. Here is a five year uh, population, five to six years uh, population number. It's about 138 crore in uh, 2020 and uh, 136 crores about about 136 crores in 2019 so how many people are really paying taxes and filing the tax returns does majority of uh, indians have pan card here is a little bit statistics on pan allotments As on 31st March 2019, there are about 44.57 crore pans issued, out of which 43.52 crores belongs to individuals. This is out of the total population of 136 or 138 as the case may be. See, now let us see uh, the income tax. Uh, how many persons are pay, uh, filing the income tax returns? For the financial year 1819, for individuals, it's only about 5.95 crores. In other words, out of the population of one point, uh, uh, out of the population of 136 crore, and out of pan allot is of 43.52 crores, only 5.95 crore pe people are filing the returns, which is uh, very low, which is less than 10% of uh, our population. So here is the uh, expectation by the income tax department and uh, their, expect their expected uh, number of uh, people uh, who are supposed to file return is higher compared to uh, actually the returns filed by uh, taxpayers. Let's look at the global uh, scenario where many countries have higher percentage of population paying taxes compared to India. If you see here, India is uh, uh, roughly around 5.8, uh, whereas in other countries it is uh, in double digits. See, here is uh, our uh, tax revenue, this is the amount which uh, the government is uh, collecting. Government tax revenue is increasing over the period. If you look at the table here, from uh, 5,58,989 crore to 1,137,684, uh, 685 crores, it's, which is almost doubled. Now let us turn our focus on fundamentals or key features of uh, income tax. Income earned in the financial year, that is from 1st April to 31st March, is taxed in the next year. Income earning period is known as tax year or financial year or technically under the income tax law, it is called as previous year. This income is taxed in the following year, which is known as assessment year. In other words, assessment year uh, succeeds previous year. For example, for the period 1st April 2020 to 31st March 2021, 
the previous year will be 2020-21 and assessment year will be 2021-22 another example for the period uh, april 1st april 2021 to 31st march 2022 previous year will be 2021-22 and assessment year will be 22 2022 23 india follows a residency based taxation in other words physical presence in india determines residency of the taxable persons and on the basis of residential status tax is levied there are broadly three category of residential status for individuals they are resident and ordinary resident in india resident but not ordinary resident of india and non resident broadly a non resident is taxable only for income earned or received in india his global income is not taxable similarly for resident but not ordinary resident of india however in case of resident resident of india his global income is taxable while filing the income tax return a person is entitled to avail certain presumption a certain exemptions deductions or reliefs which are specifically provided in the income tax law generally these exemptions reliefs deductions are permissible subject to conditions imposed in the law for such claims an exemption means it will not be taxable at all whereas a deduction means a specified deduction of income or it's a specific reduction of income while tax relief means reduction in tax liability all tax payers are required to file taxes annually before the due dates if tax returns are filed late there could be exposure for uh, interest and penalty and also late fee charges similarly if the tax returns are not filed despite taxable income there could be exposure for tax interest penalty and prosecution though the tax returns are required to be submitted annually the government seeks to collect the taxes during the income earning year itself even though the income are assessed in the next year once the tax returns are filed the income tax department picks the sum of the returns based on certain criteria for detailed audit which is also known as assessment generally tax evasion or tax avoidance are viewed very seriously by the government there are many anti tax evasion or avoidance provisions in the income tax law income tax law presupposes a periodical monetary return coming in with some sort of regularity or expected regularity from definite sources for example salary rent interest on fixed deposits etc which flows from employment or property or deposit all this assumes the character of income there are many kinds of incomes a tax a taxable person earns most of the incomes are covered under the income tax law broadly for the purpose of income tax law incomes are classified into five categories and these are uh, and and these are main heads of income for tax these five categories are salary house property income business or professional income capital gains other sources any income will fall within 
one of these categories last one the other sources is the residual head of income if any income does not fall under uh, under uh, salary or house property business or profession or capital gains then it will fall under other sources there is separate basis for calculating income under each head of income there can be specific exemptions or specific deductions from gross income under each heads of income net income from all the heads of incomes are aggregated for determining final taxable income income from salary is relevant for salaried class all employment incomes are classified under salary uh, uh, under salary income a specific standard deduction up to rupees 50000 is allowed as a reduction from salary income besides a salaried employee is permitted to claim certain exemptions like uh, house rent uh, leave travel uh, allowance gratuity etc if you have one or more house properties then income from house property is relevant the income may may be self occupied or let out both will have to be shown in the tax return generally value of rent receivable is the gross value of let out house property but in case of self occupied house uh, gross value will be taken as nil value for a let out property there is a standard deduction at 30% to defray potential cost of uh, repairs and maintenance of the house property property taxes paid to municipality or corporation is also deductible from gross rental value besides if the property is purchased or constructed out of borrowings from banks or financial institutions the interest paid is also deductible subject to certain limits if the property is held in joint names or if the property is under co ownership then based on the share of each person the gross value of rent minus property taxes is allocable to each owner and such owner has to include the house property income along with uh, his other uh, incomes income from business or profession is relevant for a person involved in business such as trading manufacturing or rendering of services generally a profit and loss account and balance sheet is prepared by a taxpayer the net profit subject to certain adjustments will be considered as net income for taxing under under the head profits and gains of business or profession capital gains head is relevant when you sell properties such as house property commercial property or shares units of mutual fund etc the difference between sale price and the cost cost is generally capital gains capital gains can be either uh, short term short term capital gain or long term capital gains long term capital gains are generally taxed at the lower rate while short term capital gains is taxed at the rates at which the taxpayer is paying taxes how do you classify whether there is any short term capital gain or long term capital gain it depends on the period of uh, holding the asset generally an asset held for more than 36 months is classified as long term capital gains and if it is held for less than 36 months it is classified as short term capital gains in other words if if you hold the asset for more than 36 months it is long term uh, capital asset and if it is held for less than 36 months it is short term capital asset however for certain assets like uh, listed shares or units of mutual funds the period of holding for classification into long term or short term is 12 months instead of 36 months you can claim certain exemptions from uh, 
uh, from uh, capital gains from long term capital assets for example if you sell a house and invest uh, the sale uh, proceeds in another house then you may be able to claim exemption depending on your investment in the new house likewise there are certain other exemptions available for capital gains on long term capital gains this slide shows typically how you will calculate the uh, calculate and aggregate your uh, income as explained previously the incomes are classified into various heads of income and by applying uh, uh, calculation principles such as exemptions and deductions net income from each head of income uh, each head of incomes are aggregated this is called gross total income from the gross total income if there are any losses of earlier years then those losses are deducted further for certain savings and uh, income specific deductions are available these are over and above what you claim under each head of income these deductions are called chapter 6a deduction since these deductions are specified in chapter 6a of the income tax act gross income minus earlier year losses minus chapter 6a deductions gives you total taxable income income tax is calculated on this total income which is in the last uh, line we will come to tax rates a uh, little later and see uh, and then now let us see typical deductions under chapter 6a before that let us say, you know uh, in this slide you see some of the popular uh, exemptions and deductions that tax payers generally consider depending on their situation and uh, subject to uh, fulfillment of conditions for claiming such exemptions and deductions so uh, you know generally interest on uh, provident fund insurance proceeds uh, vrs income gratuity commutation of pension hra and lta these are exempted uh, from uh, income tax subject to fulfillment of conditions similarly uh, as we have already seen there are some uh, deductions like uh, standard deductions uh, interest on house property uh, property taxes cost of uh, capital asset all these things are uh, uh, important deductions one of the important deduction is uh, is deduction for approved contributions such as housing loan uh, repayment contribution to provident fund insurance premiums national savings certificates special bank deposits etc there is a provision under income tax law which is popularly known as section 80c which allows deduction of up to rupees 150000 per year for investments in the schemes mentioned in the slide generally most tax payers contribute towards these savings savings instruments and claim deduction there is another scheme called national pension scheme wherein one can make contributions periodically contributions made by you up to rupees 50000 in a year is also eligible for deduction therefore uh, both pension fund contribution and atc which we saw a while ago can allow you to reduce your income by about 2 lakh rupees now let us see tax rates applicable for financial year 2021 and 21 22 when we say income tax it means that core income tax rate plus surcharge plus education cess 
both surcharge and education cess are additional in this light we have restricted tax rates as applicable to individuals you will see that uh, for individuals there are four slab rates if uh, the income is up to uh, say up to 250000 rupees then there is no need for there, there is no tax payable if the income is in the range of 250000 to 5 lakh the tax rate will be 5% on on the income between 5 lakh to 2 lakh 15 if the income increases say if it, if the income is in the range of 5 lakh to 10 lakh on the, on the slab of 5 lakh to 10 lakh the tax rate will be 20% plus on the slab of 2 lakh 50 to 5 lakh 5% if the income is above 10 lakhs the difference between the income minus 10 lakh on that income the tax rate will be 30% plus 20% on the income of uh, 5 lakh that is 10 lakh to 5 lakh and 5% on the income between 5 lakh to 2 lakh 50000 this is how uh, the taxes are uh, calculated in addition to this there will be surcharge applicable if the income is if the taxable income is less than 50 lakhs then there is no surcharge payable but if it is more than 50 lakhs and away and if it is up to 1 crore the surcharge rate is 10 lakh if the income is more than 1 crore and if it is less than uh, 2 crore the surcharge is 15% and if the income exceeds 5 crores then the surcharge rate is 37% it's a very high rate in addition to this there is a education cess at the rate of 4% this is applicable across the board there are different uh, rates of taxes for senior uh, citizens and uh, for senior citizens uh, the slab starts from up to 3 lakh there is no uh, taxes for them the taxes starts from 3 lakh and onwards the tax rate is 5% then it increases to 20 for 5 lakh to 10 lakh slab and about 10 lakh slab it is 30% plus they are they are also liable to pay surcharge depending on the income range and it it varies from 10% to 37% additionally they have to pay education cess these are the tax rates for individuals there are separate uh, tax rates for uh, a, a company there are separate tax rates for uh, partnership firms effective from 2020 2021 the government has introduced a new scheme of taxation for individuals so as to bring more simplicity to the tax system as per this system as per this system there are separate tax rates on graded basis for and and there are seven slab rates these uh, slab rates uh, range from 5% to 30% this scheme is an optional scheme a tax payer is free to choose either the existing system of tax which we discussed uh, a while ago and this new scheme of tax he has to make the tax payer has to make alternative calculations and he can choose the one which is beneficial either he can choose a choose the existing system or he is or if he is uh, if he is benefited he can choose the new system also key condition is that he will have to forego all the deductions and exemptions under the new scheme of taxation a list of exemptions and deductions which are not permissible if he uh, opts for new scheme is also specified by the uh, law okay. however 
there will be uh, surcharge and education says which will be applicable seniors uh, senior citizens do not enjoy any concession concession in tax see these are the uh, tax rates for the new schemes if you see there are uh, there are seven uh, there are seven uh, slabs here and uh, the tax rate uh, varies across uh, various uh, slabs it starts from 5% and uh, the at the highest level it is 30% in addition to that there is a uh, there is a surcharge and education says is a, a surcharge uh, from 10% to 37% it varies and uh, education says is 4% at all the levels now a question may arise whether uh, old system is better or uh, new system is uh, better here on stand alone basis without considering uh, available uh, exemptions or uh, uh, deductions for a salaried person on uh, uh, equitable basis we have uh, considered the taxation and uh, it it appears that uh, there is uh, savings uh, uh, if someone opts for uh, new regime but the point here is that uh, here in this calculation the exemptions and deductions under the existing system is not considered without considering that on the face of it it uh, appears that new system is better better but the real question is whether one should go for a real old system or new system but that depends on two important uh, aspects the quantum of uh, deductions which uh, a person claims under the old regime and the quantum of exemptions that uh, uh, he he will be able to claim therefore uh, what one has to do is that one has to prepare two separate set of uh, calculations and see the scheme which is more tax efficient and based on that one has to take a decision for individuals when your uh, income exceeds basic exemption limit or in case of refunds or in the event of carry forward of losses it is essential to file tax returns for companies and firms it is mandatory to file the return return of income is the form you submit to the tax department disclosing income from various sources you will do a self assessment of income calculate tax liability taking into account all the prepaid taxes and you will pay balance taxes tax returns are required to be filed before uh, time table in the slide explains typical due dates for various category of uh, uh, various category of uh, tax payers uh, say for example in case of uh, individual assessees uh, generally the return is required to be filed before 31st july that is uh, for the financial year uh, 2021 that is the ongoing uh, financial year uh, 31st july 2021 is the due date for filing the tax return in case you file in case you missed filing the return before the due date then you have additional time for filing the tax return that is 3 uh, months uh, uh, prior to the uh, beginning of assessment year or before the completion of assessment whichever is earlier so uh, but the point here is that if you file a uh, belated return that is a return if you file a return late then you have to pay late uh, file late filing fees to the government therefore there is a limitation for filing a uh, return late or if you find that in case you file a return and later find that there was some error in the return you filed then you are allowed to file a revised return but there is a limitation the limitation is mentioned in the slide which is within 3 months from the end of the relevant 
assessment year or before the completion of assessment, whichever is earlier. Return is filed after completion of uh, financial year, but government cannot wait till the due date for filing the return and the taxpayer paying the taxes at the time of filing the return since various government expenses are to be met. Therefore, the government collects taxes during the year in which income is earned on the concept of pay as you earn. Typically, government collects income tax in the form of advance tax or TDS or TCS. Advance tax is the income tax paid in advance during the income earning year. Taxpayer whose tax liability is more than 10,000 per annum is required to pay advance tax in four installments. This advance tax is adjusted against the final taxes payable. TDS that is tax deducted at source is another mode of collection of uh, taxes. Government stipulates that payer of income such as employer paying salary uh, to deduct the tax and pay the balance to the recipient. Taxes are remitted by the payer of the income directly to the government and the recipient gets tax credit for the taxes deducted by payer and uh, paid to the government. There are many kinds of payments which attract a, a tax deduction at source. For example, payment of rent, fees to fees payable to a professional, brokerages, etc. So what happens once uh, you file your income tax return? Once you file your uh, once you file your income tax return, there is Central Processing Center of Income Tax Department, which makes a preliminary processing of the return. And if there are uh, any refunds, the refunds are allowed. If there are if there is any mistakes committed by taxpayer while filing the return, these are uh, rectified. These are adjusted by the CPC. After processing the return, CPC sends a document known as intimation of assessment which allows which shows uh, income declared by the taxpayer deductions claimed and exemptions claimed taxes prepaid taxes etc it also shows the calculation made by cpc based on the income reported by the taxpayer in certain cases the income tax department seeks to review tax return filed by a taxpayer with reference to documentation to discover any underreporting of the income or misreporting of income. Typically, a detailed review is made. After that, there will be assessment order. Nowadays, the government has introduced faceless assessment scheme, wherein taxpayer is not required to physically visit tax office for assessment. All uh, communications and uh, submissions are made through income tax portal of the income tax department. The assessment is conducted electronically. If you are not happy with the action of the tax officer with regard to your uh, assessment order, then you are entitled to file appeal before Commissioner of Income Tax Appeals. This is the first level uh, appeal. And if you are unhappy with the order of uh, Commissioner of Income Tax Appeals, then you are uh, uh, permitted to uh, file further appeal with the Income Tax uh, Tribunal. And uh, if you are uh, if you are still aggrieved by the order of uh, the tribunal, you have the you 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 are in you, you may you may go to high court and uh, file an appeal and against the uh, or against the judgment of uh, high court uh, appeal lies with the supreme court with this we come to the last slide key take, uh, key takeaways 
based on the discussion so far you will consider some of the key takeaways which are listed in the slide and which uh, can be beneficially used uh, as far as income tax is concerned so first one is that you know the tax planning in under the income tax tax planning is permissible for tax planning is uh, uh, an action by the taxpayer within the four corners of the law and uh, this uh, tax planning has to be done well in advance not uh, at the end of the year or after completion of the year secondly uh, a taxpayer will have to see whether he has to file a return under old scheme or new scheme. Alternative calculations will have to be made as discussed previously. And most important is that uh, as a taxpayer, one has to uh, comply with the tax loss on a timely basis. Any delay in uh, compliance will uh, expose uh, interest penalty and late fee charges and it, it, it may be possible that uh, your that return which you file uh, may be taken up for uh, assessment and you will be asked to prove the income uh, deductions exemptions all those things so therefore you should uh, maintain a robust uh, documentation to uh, to demonstrate uh, true income in your return. In any financial uh, decisions, in any financial uh, investments, or in any uh, financial matters, uh, there can be uh, impact of tax. So therefore, in any uh, way, while taking any financial uh, decision, do consider uh, taxes, because if you do not consider taxes, at a later point in time, uh, you may end up in uh, paying the taxes. Not only taxes, there can be huge uh, interest burden also. And uh, another important thing is that uh, you need to uh, uh, visit uh, your income tax portal where uh, all your uh, information will be there, your tax returns and uh, other, uh, other communication from the income tax department. And you need to check this uh, on regular basis to see if there are any notices or if there are any action required uh, from you. These are important uh, uh, key takeaways. With this, I conclude the session. Thanks.